Hi mamas, happy Mental Health Monday. I am Carrie with Reset Brain and Body. Joining you this week to talk about body positivity. This is the time of year that we are simply inundated with all of the shoulds of diet, exercise, New Year's resolutions. How often do you hear the new year, new you slogan? And this is not necessarily the most sustainable or healthy way to look at yourself and to build up your self-esteem going into the new year. There's so much pressure to continually look your best self. And that is, you know, media, it's culture, and it's not necessarily the healthiest for you. So this year, I would encourage you to think about things differently. If losing weight or getting more fit is on the top of your list, maybe you start to look at things in a way that actually fits your lifestyle and your unique goals versus what you think you should be doing because everyone else is doing it or because this is what you do at the new year. So the first way to stay more body positive this holiday is to recognize that diets don't work. I know, <laughs> it's frustrating to think about that. There is an amazing book called The Anti-Diet by Christy Harrison. If you haven't heard of it, I encourage you to pick it up. This is for anyone that when you really are uh, sincere with yourself, you can recognize that you have some sort of disordered eating or exercise habits. Overeating or undereating, restricting of any kind, overexercising, uh, pushing yourself to the limit, being on frequent diets, read the anti-diet or listen to it. Christy Harrison also has a podcast that I highly recommend. Diets don't work. Every time you get on a diet, you might lose that initial weight, but you end up regaining that weight and more. In order to successfully keep the weight off, you have to actually commit your entire life to keeping the weight off, which is why so many people, and this is beautiful, but so many people that have lost a lot of weight have ended up creating a career out of it so that they can focus all of their time and attention and energy on maintaining that weight loss. It becomes completely part of their entire lifestyle, which is great if your lifestyle can permit that, but many of you are moms and many of you understand that it's not always easy to commit to calorie counting and a fitness routine that would allow for that weight to continue to stay off. So what happens is that we end up gaining that weight and then some, because our body fights really hard to keep that status quo. Our body doesn't want to lose weight. Once you get to that equilibrium, your body wants to stay there. It feels comfortable and safe there. That's why it's really hard to lose the last 10 pounds because so many of our bodies just have settled into a comfortable state. So first, having the awareness and the oftentimes difficult realization that diets don't work. And if you are someone that chronically diets, kind of look at what is below that. What is below the disordered eating habits? What is below the pressure and the expectations to lose weight? Now, dieting is different from just having a healthy exercise and eating routine. And that's where we get into step two. So how to stay body positive? Step two is to be intuitive. So just because everyone else has the Peloton or the mirror doesn't mean you need to have it too. Perhaps high intensity workouts don't work for your body. Perhaps you get migraines or you have already a stressed out life so more high intensity things don't work for you. Maybe cardio isn't the way that you feel good, yoga is. Be intuitive with your body, waking up and saying, okay, how does my body wanna move today? Maybe my body doesn't wanna move and that's okay, but maybe a walk or a run or a yoga class or just some gentle stretching. Maybe I wanna do a 10 minute hit workout, but not 30 minutes, which is what the class is online, but just 10 minutes. Be intuitive and really cue into what your body is asking for and that changes day to day. What your body wants today isn't necessarily what your body wants tomorrow. So a lot of times we set ourselves up for failure when we set this workout routine, which isn't actually intuitive. And so no wonder we end up skipping a workout because it's not actually what our body is asking for. Gentle movement, some type of movement every day is really all we need for our cardiovascular health. And so what does that look like for you? Be intuitive with body movement and then also be intuitive with eating. If diets don't work, but you know that you feel better eating 
vegetables or you feel better having a smoothie every day or you feel better when you don't eat past 7 p.m., great, that's intuitive, but it's not restricting and counting calories. It's just listening to your body. I had this weird moment a few months ago when I was still pregnant where I just felt off. Actually, it was, gosh, it was a year ago. It was right after Christmas. I felt off. I felt like I wasn't connected to my body. My pregnancy was pretty hard. And I was like, okay, body, what do you need to eat? What do I need? And I sat there and I meditated and I kind of did a body scan and I meditated and I kept asking my body, what is it that you want? What is it that you need? And my body responded and it gave me a set menu and I followed it for a week because I listened. My body said, eat these foods, only these foods for a week. And what was interesting is that after I did it for the week, I felt so great. I felt just revived, no calorie counting, but because I have a history of disordered eating, I wanted to know exactly how many calories it was. So after the week went by, I plugged everything in that my body intuitively told me to eat, and it was exactly the calories that I needed at that stage in my pregnancy. Our body knows what we need. The problem is, is that we have lost that communication link. We've lost the ability to listen to it because of all the shoulds and the pressure and the fad diets and whether you think you should do paleo or plant-based. Just listen to what your body is asking for, and generally it will guide you in the right direction. So being intuitive also means that we release the um, pressure to avoid certain foods and to shame or guilt ourselves. I'll get to that point in a moment, but I want to keep going with our five steps. The third step is to establish routine. During the holidays especially, we lose any sense of routine, right? People are off work, the kids are home from school, there's family visiting, maybe not as much this year, but usually there's a lot of chaos and just out of that routine and structure, which is why we want to hunker down into some sort of really, really strict routine come the new year, right? We ask ourselves, okay, like I just want to really commit and everything starts Monday and I'm going to establish this like a wonderful, beautiful diet and exercise plan because finally I'm going to have the ability to do so. And we're really, really strict. And then it's too strict and it doesn't allow for the fluctuations of everyday life. So during the holidays, don't let go of your routine. Try and find some structure. Even when you're on vacation, it's important to get up and take a walk or do something to move your body to still eat those healthy foods so that you don't feel like this pendulum has to swing so far the other way. Establish some sort of routine for yourself so it doesn't feel like such a dichotomy between holiday mode and then January 5th mode. <laughs> okay, the other thing during the holidays is that it is temporary. I know for me, I wait all year for my mother-in-law's Christmas cookies. This year, I thought I wasn't getting them. We finally got them yesterday. I was very happy, but I'm not going to eat them all in one sitting. I'm going to enjoy each one every time I eat it. So often, because this is temporary, we can go one of two mindsets. We can either say, I'm going to enjoy all of it right now as fast as I can. And so we see a lot of binge type behaviors. If I eat this whole cheesecake now, then it won't be here tomorrow and I don't have to worry about it. And it's only a one time a year thing, so might as well get it over with. Did you actually enjoy eating that cheesecake then? Probably not. So when you are gonna have these fun foods, enjoy them. Give yourself permission to have the Christmas cookies. Be mindful about how you're eating it so that you can actually savor it and have one a day or two a day or three a day. Make them last because yes, they probably only come around once every year, but that doesn't mean you have to eat them all in one sitting. Same goes for when you're eating uh, maybe a fancy meal at Christmas or at New Year's or somewhere around the holidays. Enjoy it. Take home leftovers. Enjoy it again the next day. It doesn't have to be all gone in that one sitting. And allow yourself to enjoy the fun foods because they are fun and they are nostalgic and it is something you look forward to and there's nothing wrong with eating for pleasure. Okay, the last thing that I already mentioned a little bit was letting go of the guilt and the shame. A lot of times with eating, we end up going into a cycle. We're feeling either stressed or anxious or bored or lonely or sad or nostalgic or grieving. So we end up wanting something to comfort ourselves with. And food tends to be the most accessible thing. So we eat the food. Maybe we eat too much of the food. 
and then we beat ourselves up for doing it. And then there's this shame and guilt spiral, and then a lot of times punishment, in which then, okay, tomorrow I have to work out a ton, or tomorrow I won't eat anything, tomorrow I'll fast all day and I'll only eat one meal. This cycle of punishing ourselves, being overly critical, and emotionally driving our food choices and exercise choices is just detrimental to your metabolism, to your health, and of course, your mental health. And if this is something that you notice yourself falling into routinely, not just during the holidays, it is okay to get help for it. You know, addictive type of personalities tend to fall into this behavior. The binging and purging, whether that's through actually purging or through exercise. Orthorexia is actually a diagnosable term for people that are obsessed with healthy eating and healthy exercise, that they're so obsessed that they end up spending most of their day planning and tracking and exercising and what is the best thing to eat when and when is the best time to eat when I need to work out. And that can be, again, disordered eating. So all of these things is a way to try and get away from that disordered eating in a way in which we can just establish a loving relationship with ourselves, with our body, and find movement and nutrition that works for us. A lot of our clinicians at our practice at Reset do work with binge eating disorder, disordered eating, types of addictive behavior, and we're happy to help you through this. This is something that is so layered and culturally has become so normalized. Dieting has become so appropriate to talk about and to share and to share tips that we kind of ignore the fact that it actually is disordered. And this isn't the way that we are supposed to be living our life. We're not supposed to be thinking about it all the time. We're not supposed to be always wanting to lose 10 pounds. Again, I reference back the anti-diet book because it is a really beautiful, eye-opening, journalistic approach to how we are looking at diet culture. But of course, we are here for you if you need any help with this. I myself have been on my own journey with healing from disordered eating, and it's been transformative and difficult, so I get it if you too need to start this journey. All right, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, have a great new year. I will see you in 2021. Take care.